Hi, my name is Steve Martile, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about unmasking your true self. So I'm going to start with a story, and it's just about being true to yourself. So uh, about two weeks ago, I ended up um, just, I had a desire come up. You know, sometimes you get these, um, something kind of pulls you to do something, right? And I was like thinking about reinvigorating my YouTube channel, but instead of doing that, I thought, you know what? I started this podcast series about three years ago called The Meeting of the Masters and I decided to reach out to someone on that list who I highly respect that would have been a great person to interview for this YouTube channel. And so I reached out to her and asked her if she wanted to be on as the first guest to relaunch the show. Now here's the interesting thing about preferences and being true to yourself. About a day later, I got a response to the email and she said, yes, I'd love to do the show. Please coordinate with my coordinator on my schedule so we can do pre-record the call. And then when I read it, the, her response, the next day, it felt differently than when I had sent it out originally. It felt exciting the first time I said, let's start this thing. And then when she responded back, I was like, this feels like work. Okay. And I mean, I work, <laughs> I do things, I don't sit on my ass all day, but it just felt like work. It felt like this doesn't feel aligned with me. It feels like I'm going out of my way to do this as a favor to her. And that wasn't the intent. I wanted to do it as a service to humanity. And I felt initially that it was aligned with me, but it wasn't. So a couple days later, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sleep on this. I get up in the morning and I'm like contemplating this idea of starting this new channel, starting with her as the first guest. And in my contemplation, in my meditation, I realized that, you know what, what would be a better idea? My preference would be to invigorate my own channel, start creating content regularly, you know, figure out a few things that I haven't sorted out so I can get more views and more visibility and more audience through my own channel. And that's what I've decided to do. So I went back to the original woman and I said, you know what, this isn't gonna work out. Um, I've got too much on my plate right now, but I will reach out to you sometime next year if I decide to relaunch at another time. And I got out of the commitment and I didn't do it in like, you know, I wasn't lying. I was just like, I've got to focus on something else right now. I got to focus on this because this is more highly aligned for what I prefer to do. And that's a part of being true to yourself is that what is your preference? What do you want to do right now? What is it that's something that is more preferable to you? That's more aligned with who you really are. You've got to ask those questions. And what I'm finding is that we're moving into a period of time right now where those questions are the most important questions to answer. Because it's not about doing something for the money. It's not about necessarily taking on someone as a client if you own a business because it's a client and it brings in money. you got to ask yourself, is this preferable to you? Now, some of you might say, well, I need the money or I need the job, so I need to actually do this. And what I'm suggesting that you consider is what is your preference? Is this client the right person for you? Because if they're not, then this is not higher aligned with your higher self. And that's key. Because if you align with something that you don't prefer, then what happens is you're going to get more people like that. You're going to get more choices like that. I know it's a difficult choice, but it's the only choice is like, what do you prefer? Now, everyone's in a different position. They have different circumstances. But for me personally, I feel that that choice is really important. What do I prefer now? What do I prefer? Do I prefer to do that? No, I prefer to start my own, keep going and grow my own channel. So that's what I've done. That's why I'm recording this video. So it's about being true to yourself. It's about tr being true to who you really are, which can be a difficult thing to honor because we have so much programming, so much baggage, so much of thoughts coming in that we think are our own, but are not. It's other people, other desires, us picking up on those vibrations and those other ideas that are not our own ideas. So that's just one example. I'll give you another example that's hones in and dials in on this idea of preference. 
Because remember, preference is really about excitement. And excitement is what leads to the mechanism of this reality unfolding in the most efficient way possible. It is preference. It is excitement. I got, uh, again, this has happened in the last couple of weeks. So it's very fresh for me. It's very new. Where I got a couple sales calls for potential clients. And when someone books a sales call with me, they answer a few qualifying questions. And one is, do you have a budget to invest in the services we provide? And do you actually have an urgency? Is it like of high importance to you? Okay. And, uh, and this is on the book publishing side, by the way. This is one aspect of my business, but it's one of many. And so I got these two people that came in both at the same time around the, within a couple days that were, you know, urgency was high, like this is a high priority, but it was not something they had the money to invest in. Not that they didn't have the money. A lot of times people have the money, but they don't value the services that we provide. And that's a problem with me. And for a couple days after these gentlemen booked, I was like, should I cancel those calls? I'm like, they don't value this service. And I've had these conversations, like I've had these conversations before. I've had thousands of sales conversations. And when I get on the call and someone doesn't value money, uh, not money, value one of the services we have, for example, publishing a book, then I would basically be like wasting my time because they're not, they don't believe it's worth to invest money in getting a book published. And that's okay. What was going through my head was, this is better than nothing. That's what was going through my head. This is better than nothing. At least it's something. So at least it's a potential sale. And that's a very scarce way to think that this is better than nothing, right? I don't prefer this job, but this is better than nothing. At least I have a job, you know, or I don't really want to work with this client after I talk to him, but it's better than nothing. Scarcity. And guess what happens when you prefer that, acknowledge it, act on it. You activate it in your field. So I got one, and then a day later I got another one. Both in the same field of that spectrum. That have an urgency, but don't value the service. Or don't have a budget. Either way, it's not someone who's a client for me. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not Mother Teresa. I'm doing this as a business, but I'm also doing this to connect and align with people who value our service. So I went the other day and I find this fascinating because this has happened to me so many times. It was literally yesterday and I canceled both calls. I'm like, forget that. That's not alignment with who I am. This is what the service costs. This is what I value. If someone doesn't value it, I don't want to talk to them. I go in and cancel the calls. So this whole thing about like, this is better than nothing. I dropped that and I was like, no, this is not someone who's alignment with who I am. Three hours after I went in and deliberately canceled those calls, I get another call booked for mid of this week. Someone who has money, values our service, and has urgency. And that's kind of like how reality unfolds. It's like, hey, hey, here's something that, you know, might be aligned with you, but may not. Do you like it? And I was like, no. I just canceled the calls, right? I canceled those conversations. I'm like, I don't want to talk to those people. I was very clear about like that. I just threw it out there. I was like, F no. That's not worthy of my time. And then as soon as I do that, the higher self is like, oh, okay. That's not aligned with who you really are. I'll give you someone who is. Because you took action and you showed me what you value what you prefer, what is your highest excitement. And then the new call gets booked in. And in fact, even the one, the person I spoke with today was amazing. And we have a follow-up call in two days to get started, plan the work, the budget, the schedule, and get going. Very highly aligned, has the money to invest, and has an exciting project that I'm excited in. So this whole idea of preference and following your preference it's kind of a big deal because it's not about, the, well, this is better than nothing. At least I got something. You're honoring that something, even though it might not be your preference. As long as you continue to commit to honoring that preference, which is not, or I shouldn't say preference. You keep honoring the thing you don't prefer 
it's going to continue to activate in your field in 3D physical world. So what am I suggesting you do? Ask yourself, what is your preference? What is your preference? Do you prefer something else? And then act on it because the acting on it is going to give you the thing that you prefer. It's very simple, but hard to do. Because again, we have this fear is, well, this is better than nothing. I have this job or I have these clients. It's better than nothing. You have to be willing to cut all the attachment to what is in your reality and say, no, that doesn't align with me anymore. I'm moving in this direction. And then the higher self will be like, oh, I got it. You acted on it. This is what you really want. And this is what I'm very clear on is that as long as you don't have any limiting beliefs around that area of your life, the response, like I said, a few hours happens very quickly, if not within a day or so of you making that decision and acting on it. So this idea of being true to yourself is about this idea of what do you prefer? And you might have to close your eyes. Like, what do you prefer? What is your highest excitement? In fact, I have a journal that's coming out that goes with the seven day manifestation book. Okay, so here's the book. But I have a journal that goes with this book that's going to help you refine, improve, and get clarity around what your preferences and desires are. And in fact, it's, I think, a four or five month journal. So you can use it for four or five months to keep honing, journaling this process. You can read the book if you want, or you can just watch the video YouTube of the same name on my channel and then get the journal. I'm going to sell it for like five, six bucks. It should be available before the end of the year is what I'm hoping. So this fear of saying no to someone because this is better than nothing is a part of you that either has power over you or it does not. And it's up to you to honor what you don't prefer or what you prefer. It's really that simple. And the more that you honor this preference of I want this, but not that. And then you act on it. You deliberately like, you know, if you're dating people right now and you're in the dating scene and you're getting some terrible dates and you keep saying yes, yes to that type of person, you need to be able to say, no, nah, this isn't working for me. And how would you actualize that? How would you show and demonstrate to your higher self that you don't prefer that you're on the date you're an hour into the date you're like you tell the person this isn't working out i don't think we're gonna make we're gonna work it out i gotta go we don't eat dinner you didn't have drinks or anything you just left why because it's what you don't prefer you're walking away from it and you're walking towards you do prefer that's acting on your preference sitting there and being like oh you know with one hour date turned into a four hour date and it really wasn't the person i preferred but i sat it through it anyways well, you keep choosing that. So it's really about acting on it, being deliberate. It's almost like for me personally, I'm getting, I'm not saying this is how it is for everyone, but for me, I was Mike, I was pissed off. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Canceled the calls. Three hours later, boom, the other call shows up. Perfect person for me, perfectly aligned. So that's, that's really the game we're playing, right? It's about this because it really can shift that quickly. If it's not shifting that quickly for you because you're not being uh, very clear and acting on your preference, then it could be because you have a limiting belief. There's some fear built into it. Oh, I don't want to not date someone because at least I have someone, right? I don't want to be alone. And that's a fear too. Well, at least I have some money coming in from this client, even though it's not what I prefer, it's better than nothing because I don't want to have nothing. Fear of poverty, fear of no money, fear of scarcity. So what you're doing is your preference is actually aligned with the limitation, with the limiting belief. And that's okay too. I'm not making a judgment at all. I'm just saying for me, it's become very clear that if you want to unmask your true self, you have to be very clear and dialed into your desires, your preferences and being okay with saying no to things because it's not what you prefer. I hope you found this useful and helpful. Again, my journal that comes out with this book is coming out by the end of this year. Hopefully it'll be published on Amazon. I'll have a link in this video. 
and uh, I hope we have an amazing holiday season as we get into the holiday Christmas-ish season, and I'll connect with you with another video next week. Talk to you then. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And if you don't like it, then you probably didn't watch the end anyways. Have an amazing holiday, and we'll talk to you again next week.